I got into marketing because I like data. You know, I like math, I like statistics, and as it turns out, marketers have a lot of data available to them um, about customers looking at their behavior. Um, I'd say the biggest shift has been the amount of data that we're collecting. If you think about a consumer today, they carry around their cell phone all the time. Um, they use their cell phone for email. They use their cell phone to take pictures, to access the internet. And all of that is data that's collected that is available to businesses to um, improve, the de- improve the decisions that they make. Um, so I think you know, the amount of information about people that's now quantifiable uh, has been the biggest shift I've seen. So, po- politics is an interesting space. It feels like we're now in a never-ending election cycle. You know, it used to be confined to a couple of months before the election. Now it's well, starting in twenty January of twenty seventeen, we started gear. People started gearing up for the twenty twenty election. Um, at the end of the day, we're talking about human brands. Right? The president has a brand. All of the candidates have brands. You know, last night I caught parts of the um, de- the Democratic primary debates. You know, all of those individuals have a brand that they're tr- that they're representing with their with their actions. Uh, and so I think the notion of politicians as a brand is something that we're more aware of now, um, how they build their following, how they uh, communicate with their supporters, how they try to persuade people. Yeah, at its core, it's marketing. It's I want someone to vote for me rather than voting for uh, my opponent. Uh, we, we've started to see more about how political advertising works, that uh, third-party advertising from PACs um, tends to be less effective than advertising coming directly from the candidate. In terms of whether or not people recognize that it's coming from a third party uh, is question is questionable. We're also seeing a more critical role that social media has played. Um, if we go back to kind of the dissection of the 2016 presidential election, the the role that social uh, networks like Facebook played uh, in the dissemination of information, and I think we're seeing kind of a reckoning with the role that technology plays in politics. There used to be kind of the balance between positive and negative advertising. You know, the positive ads are going to kind of say, here's all the good things that I've done and will do. The negative ads say, don't vote for my ca- my opponent because they're going to do all these bad things or have done all these bad things. And more and more, we're seeing that a larger share of advertising is negative in nature. And so then there's that question of how early do we go negative in the advertising and does negative advertising work? And well, there's a reason that candidates use negative advertising. It works. Um, In particular, when that negative advertising comes directly from the candidate rather than from um, third party candidate or third party groups like uh, PACs. So social TV is the idea that you have people watching television while also engaging in social media activity. Um, you, know, you can think of it as like uh, the other term that's used is media multitasking. And I've done research into television advertising previously and just like watching television. So this gives me an excuse to watch more TV um, and say that it's for work purposes. Uh, but what we're seeing more and more that you know, live viewing is on the decline because people have DVRs. People are kind of watching TV when it's convenient for them. Uh, the one thing that seems to kind of mitigate that is when it's... Um, we see more appointment viewing with live events, with sporting events, but also in those programs where there is a big social media component. Uh, so if you think about the shows that use hashtags, that are the programs themselves are active on social media to engage users, people want to be part of that conversation. Uh, what we found is that programs that do have more social media activity around them um, do tend to be better for advertisers. Uh, the nature of the advertising advertisements themselves um, do affect kind of that that relationship. Um, but we, we've seen that more social shows, we act, people are actually buying more from those advertisers after the ads air. Um, so we're kind of able to get at a causal relationship between 
uh, advertising in those programs and purchasing behavior. When people are engaging with their devices while they're seeing those programs, um, while they're seeing those advertisements, it's easier for them to kind of make that transition. And we're, we're seeing that they ultimately follow through. You, know, you can think about really in your face product placement, like, look, the F-150 truck, it, not so good when you have that explicit call out. Mm -hmm. But when it's something that is integrated into the plot, you know, I think it was um, House of Cards, for example, you, the phones play a very critical role because of the way that they're portrayed as that kind of um, central device for the characters to communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. Well, the fact that they're using it, that they may mention it, but not, it's consistent with the script. It's, it doesn't stand out to consumers. Um, you know, that type of fit we're seeing gives us, um, you know, a better reaction in terms of traffic to the website or conversations around those particular products following that type of um, marketing right. insertion. Yeah, strategy is a fantastic resource um, because it's one, it's a resource that a lot of businesses themselves use. You know, it tracks all or most types of marketing expenditure. So if I want to see a particular advertiser, which programs did they advertise in, or a particular program, you know, who are the advertisers that placed ads in that particular program or in which programs do brands engage in product placement, all of that information is available. And so when we want to look at what's the relationship between traditional advertising and social media and sales, or what kind of impact does product placement have on website traffic, you know, strategies that go to database for part of the equation. You know, what we're seeing is if we can marry that with, say, uh, Comscore is another database that we use that contains uh, website activity data or purchasing data, then we're able to, t to tell a story about what's the role that marketing plays. Maybe it's looking at different regions of the country or perhaps different demographic groups saying, you know, we have the marketing activity captured via strategy. We have the outcome that we're interested in captured from another database. And now we can do that appropriate analysis. So a lot of the work that I do is driven by what's the data that's available. Mm -hmm. And one of the sources of data that we're working with now is uh, location data. So mobile device location data, um, how much of it's being collected, how much insight can you get into a particular consumer? Um, how do we do that in a way that is privacy friendly? Mm -hmm. um, you know, for example, I don't want to be able to track everything back to a particular person who lives at a particular house. I don't need that level of information. Marketers don't need that level of information. But I, the information that marketers do need is what are the general preferences so that I can target advertising? Mm -hmm. uh, so how do we balance those two pieces? A lot of the, a lot of the kind of the, the business related books that I read tend to be at the intersection of data, technology, and more recently, um, privacy. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, Tim Wu, who's a law professor at Columbia, has a couple of books that are out. Um, the Master Switch was an older book that he had written about the um, kind of who are the new gatekeepers. Um, that he, a more recent one that he has, uh, The Attention Merchants. Um, and then there are book, um, a number of books in a similar vein of what is social media doing to society? What is it? What's the role that it's playing um, within politics? Um, I've got a stack of books around data and privacy that talk about kind of the surveillance state and surveillance capitalism. Um, it, yeah, there's. I think there, there's a question of if you believe that capitalism is good, do we still need to do we need to put some guardrails? Do we need how do you impose ethical constraints with capitalism and how do we how do we balance out these things of we want to run organizations, we want these organizations to be profitable, but we don't want them to destroy society. Resourceful, uh, diligent. Hmm. That's, I got you two. Can do, you can do two. That's fine. All right, we'll stop at. We'll, we'll go with stop two. At two. Okay.